everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner, Chuck, and this is Wine Library TV. So I'm now safely on a cruise somewhere in, oh no, actually I'm in Venice, Italy right now. I'm in Venice uh, for the third time. Um, right now I'm walking and enjoying the city underwater and thinking about you guys desperately wishing that my laptop was attached to me so I could check my email, curious of what's going on, so I miss you. But as you know, last Wednesday, I uh, taped 12. In honor of Joe Namath mainly, 12 episodes. So, we are in episode four of that, and this is Monday, and, and I'm excited. Today's episode theme is 90 Point Wines. Uh, obviously, 90 Point Wines get so much attention from the wine industry. They're really probably how 60 to 70% of the people who buy wine, buy wine, looking at the shelf talkers or the emails or the website for wines that are scored 90 and above. So they're, they're very important, and they're fun to analyze, and, uh, and we're gonna jump into uh, four very different 90 Point Wines today for you because that's what we do on WLTV, we taste wine. Wristbands, this is the final run. We are now down to our last box of wristbands. They've been going out feverishly and uh, we are going to be retiring this wristband. And when we say retiring, that also means there may be a new wristband coming on board. So, if you wanna have the original one, Fast forward 10 years from now, these are going for like 40 bones on eBay. So if you want to have the original one, I've got huge news for you, especially if you're a newbie, or as we like to call them, a lurker and haven't commented. We are giving these away for free. So all you have to do, there's a link below my video, don't email me, I get enough of my 2,000 emails a day. Down below there's a link, click it and email your address and a nice thank you and usually something that goes like this. Gary is unreal, I love the show, it's better than 24 please send me a wristband. So if you want one of these wristbands, click below, get it. They're really hot, people have been sending in the pictures and I didn't tell you that part because I'm tough like that. If you get a wristband, you gotta take a picture and send it in. Send it to that address or me or Chris Mott, whoever you want, so. Right off the bat, Trevor Jones, Virgin, Chardonnay, 2005, 90 points, Robert Parker, 13 US dollars. One second. Hey, Dad. Good boy. I'm taping the show. Uh, the Sophie Tell. Sophie Tell. Yeah, Sophie Tell. S O F T I E L, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's right across from the Beverly Center. Yep. All right, Papua. I have to go. I'm taping the show. Love you, love you, Dad. Taxi. Yeah, all right, Dad. I, I don't know, Dad, I have to go. I'm taping, literally taping the show. I love you, bye. That's what I got for trying to make it interesting, give you a quick tidbit, and we went into a three minute conversation. It's Pops, I love him, he's the best, he's the man. All right, let's give this a whirl. This is the uh, Trevor Jones South Australian Virgin Chardonnay, 90 points Parker, 13 US dollars. Trevor Jones, a tremendous producer from Australia. <laughs> Little oak monster going on in there, but not totally over the top oak. There, there is a hint of, uh, oh, there's a lot of, there is oak. There's, a, there's definitely a, a level of a butter going on there. A little <laughs> buttered popcorn. Go see Shrek 3. Actually, don't. It wasn't that good. Two was enough. Um, but some nice melon aspects, a little bit of apricot, getting a little bit of peaches as well on this nose. Let's give it a whirl. Good round flavor profile, good attack overall on the palate. Um, definitely over oaked for me, a little sugar fied for me too. Um, I enjoy the apricot and peach combo. Um, Definitely exotic in that manner. A uh, nice city. I can see a lot of people liking this wine. It is a screw top, so I actually prefer that. Uh, that's always good, so the core can't ruin it. But uh, overall, it's, it's a little disjointed, a little fakey fake for me. Um, I'm gonna score this wine 87 points because it is good and I do see a lot of people seeking it out and liking it, but I think Parker went a little high on it. A little bit of melon coming through on the finish now too, which is not too bad. A little watermelon aspect actually. Um, but. Again, just a little too oaked and a little too 
much uh, sugar for me. Let's move on. Silverado. Wow, new label. Silverado, 2003 Napa Valley Merlot. This is 20 US dollars and this is 91 points. Wine enthusiasts. Silverado is you know, a very classic winery from California. Some of the best wines I've ever had from California come from Silverado. One of my top 15 wines of all time is the 1991 Silverado Limited Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon, which to this day I adore. This is the Merlot 03. Obviously Merlot has taken a beating. A whip ass, I mean UFC style, like Chuck Liddell got knocked out the other night. That kind of style, because Sideways came out, Hollywood, you know, it's got some power. Hollywood makes all the little kids think a certain way. When I say little kids, I mean all of us. Um, and Pinot Noir has exploded, Merlot has taken a beating, but that's been a tremendous opportunity for us now. Wine fans, pay attention. You know, Merlot's really getting pricey. Even the Silverado, I remember in the $30 range five or six years ago, when you compare that to all the other wines that have gone up tremendously, there is an opportunity in California Merlot. Now let's see if we like it. The color is spectacular. Let me give you a little, there you go, you like that? So the color is tremendous. I'm very happy with the color. Let's give it a whirl. Beautiful blackberry integration going on in nose. I, I do get a little bit of like a uh, little nutty aspect, believe it or not, which is intriguing. I'm getting a blackberry component mixed in with like a hazelnut shell kind of thing going on, which I find quite intriguing. Very dark, concentrated mocha flavor as well. Very mocha and blackberry going on. Let's give it a whirl. Very ripe, very explosive, little oak, no doubt. Beautiful vanilla component going on this wine. Almost feels like there's a good chunk of Cabernet in this wine. Very heavy for a Merlot. Um, very extracted, and if there's people that are really enjoying the big Napa Cabernet $40, $50 wines, there's a lot of people I think that would really enjoy this wine. Reminds me of a top flight Napa Cab, really, uh, more than anything else. Um, so layered with its fruit component, very structured. I'm really quite surprised how good this wine is, actually. This is where preconceived notions can bite you in the ass. I mean, I have to admit, Silverado, you know, a little bit more of a mass production winery. Um, five or six of the last wines I've had from this winery I've not been excited about. And I kind of went into it saying, mm, you know, but I've got to admit, it's, it's clean fruit, it's exceptional. This is definitely not for an old world fan. This is very ripe, over the top fruit, but it is balanced. And overall, there's great complexity and a nice long finish. This is a 90 point wine. I'm gonna score this nine, 90 points. This is extremely good and for 20 bucks, I find it to be a QPR in today's world of California wine. So kudos to Silverado and uh, you know, can't always judge a book by its cover and not more true than this wine. Very impressive, very impressive. Let's move on. This is the Atika, 2005 Old Vines Grenache. 100% Grenache, and uh, this is planted 3,000 uh, feet above sea level. Very concentrated Old Vines Grenache, what we're really seeing out of, uh, out of Spain these days. And uh, I'm excited about trying this wine because this wine is, on paper, a screaming value. 13 US dollars, 90 points, Robert Parker. You know, I do have a problem with that high C artificial flavor component, um, fruit juice smell, that's what this wine has. There are people who adore this style, um, but this is overripe and over sugarified for me. Yeah, it's, it's just not my style. Um, very, very dark uh, black currant flavors coming through on the nose. A little too fake on the nose for me. Let's give it a whirl. Performing a little bit better on the mouthfeel. Yes, obnoxiously new world. And anybody who prefers, you know, old stinky feet or terroir driven flavors or vegetal aspects, 
clearly will not find this wine attractive at all. This is what some people think is wrong with the wine industry. Over the top fruit explosiveness. However, it is delicious. I mean, it's got a beautiful flavor profile uh, to it. It's got enormous amount of dark chocolate mixed in with cherry, strawberries, raspberries, black currant. I mean, a smorgasbord of fruit. Um, a very controversial wine, the kind of wine that some people are going to think are 90, is a 92 point wine and the kind of wine that a lot of people think is an 80 point wine. They just don't like that style. I think it's well made, it's not as obnoxiously over the top and fake as many of the wines are. Instead of full plate, you know, facelift and boob job and suction and all that, maybe this just got a nose job. But. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm going to score this wine 88 points. I think this is a nice QPR. It's something I think people should seek out. There are going to be a lot of people who would prefer this um, uh, more than I do. Uh, the fakeness is coming through a little bit too much for me. But overall, a well-conceived wine, a, a big wine, an explosive wine, and something I could see a lot of people liking. Let's move on. And finally, Marky Phillips. This is one of the most famous brands right now in the QPR world. This is uh, Sarah's Blend, 12 US dollars, 91 points Parker. This is a 60% Shiraz, 22% Cabernet, 15% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc blend from Australia. It costs 12 US dollars. I'm gonna stop right now and talk about the Baniac Contest, which is right over there. Look down there on the, on the sidebar. Please enter. Uh, I guess submissions are due June 23rd. If you have any questions, Chris Mott's email's there. Um, we're waiting for anything to do creative with the Baniac t-shirt and you win a trip to California with me for the whole weekend. We're gonna kill it. We've got some cool stuff lined up. Please link that. I know there's a lot of new fans. Check that out. You can't resist. All you need is a t-shirt and do something creative. Right, Mott? Creative. Great color obviously, which none of the Australian wines ever have an issue with. Really dark components coming through again on this. Uh, feels a little oaky for me, uh, a little more than I'd like. I'm getting a little bit of a, an asparagus punch as well. Nice underlining uh, tangerine flavor, which is unusual in red wines, but I'm getting that through on this wine. And also a very dark component, black cassis coming through. Let's give it a whirl. Plenty of oak monster on this wine. 15.9 alcohol content, super over the top. I know a lot of people love this wine. Why? Heck, it's over the top, it's very sugary. Americans are suckers for sugar. I for 1M, and I'm a Belarusian. Um, it, it's very over the top, it's very, very fake oriented to me. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a Shiraz it's a, it's like a red wine cocktail RWC. Um, it's very very difficult for me to rate these kind of wines because I do believe they're over the top and a, a little manipulated in the way they're made. Um, I do not find this to be a 91 point wine like Parker does. I know Parker loves the explosive fruit and I can't blame him. Listen, there's probably more people that would enjoy this wine than don't. Not that I'm a purist, as you guys know. I like the fruit bombs. This is just too much. Is there time and place for this? Absolutely. You know, you have your, uh, you're a single guy, you got the girls coming over, you want them all to drink as many glasses of this as humanly possible because they will be unconscious. Or if your girl and the guys are coming over, flip the switch, women's power. That being said, not for me. I'm gonna score this wine 86 points, the fake fruit gave it a four point reduction from the 90 point deliciousness that's tasting in the mouth and, and that's just how I feel about this wine. Question of the day. What side of the fence do you lie on? And here's what I'm asking. And the reason you're lying is you tried to scale and you fell down. So which side of the fence are you on? A lot of people have been emailing me asking me to do shows where I recommend the wines outright. Like wines that I've recently tasted and do a show and taste through and walk through with. I've preferred doing shows like this where I haven't had any of the wines. I feel it's a little bit more exciting for me, obviously. And I don't think you need to be force-fed stuff. But, you know, it's up to you. I'm getting so many requests for it. I'm trying to gauge the feel. So what side of the fence are you? Do you want me to show wines that I've recently had and retaste them with you so you know kind of the outcome or do you want me to continue doing the show the way I'm doing it where for the most part I haven't had any of the wines at least within 120, 160, 180 days. 
Do you know why? I'm gonna tell you right now. Because you, and it's a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, part of me, we're changing the wine world. Don't you think?